Welcome everybody to this uh, Google Hangout from Rio de Janeiro. Uh, during the last days, uh, the Rio Dialogues went on. There is one more today. And this morning, we are pleased to welcome Brice Lalonde, Executive Coordinator of Rio Plus 20, Sandrine Dixon de Cleve, who was a panelist at the Rio Dialogue on Energy, Ivana Savic, one of the organizing partners of the major group for children and youth at the UN Commission on Sustainable Development, and Kate Offerdal, um, who is uh, a youth delegate. So, Bruce, can you please uh, say something just to, uh, to say us hello, and then uh, Kate can ask her first question. Well, hello. Um, uh, everyone is very um, happy about um, uh, the way these dialogues uh, start. It was, it was an experiment the first time, and uh, it was, um, you know, um, a wish, a will of the Brazilian government to have a bigger, a broader participation in a different way. And uh, we, we were working with them in the UN to find this um, particular organization of work where we're having these, you know, three different votes, votes from the people on the internet, votes uh, of the audience, votes of the panel to have 30 recommendations. And I'm very happy. I'm, uh, I hope this is going to become a sort of a usual practice of all these international conferences. And uh, thank you to all the panelists and uh, also to the introduction, the facilitators. It was great. I, th I think it was great. It could be probably improved. But um, uh, I think it's this first time exciting. Over. <laughs> OK, Kate, uh, your first question, perhaps? Uh, sure. Uh, thanks for joining, Bruce. Uh, what do you think that the, the Rio Dialogues and the participatory process, the online contributions, have brought to the conference so far um, in the past few days? I think um, it, has, it has brought to, I mean, it was so different, the atmosphere in the dialogue than in the, in the negotiation decks. It's, it's incredibly different. It was so much relaxed and enthusiastic and... Uh, you know, no problem um, in the dialogues. Uh, the way we would like it to come, you know, directly from everyone. Goodwill. Let's let's try to progress. Let's let's do things together. And uh, finally, it comes with um, some quite straightforward recommendations, which are easy to understand uh, and um, which should be, which are going to be um, uh, conveyed to the head of states and governments. So I mean, it, it I think it brings them. Uh, uh, sort of a transformation. We are living a transformation of all these conferences, uh, thanks to the um, IT communication, internet, and all that. And um, so it's a mix of uh, of, of um, learning process, um, uh, direct uh, participation, contribution, and democracy. You know, uh, and it's sort of com completing. It's completing the um, intergovernmental work. Over for me. Thank you, Kate, for your question. <laughs> Thank you very much, Bruce. Uh, for, excuse me, I just forgot to introduce you to Kelly Rigg, uh, who manages a large international campaigns about uh, environment and who uh, managed the Greenpeace campaign in Johannesburg quite a long time ago. So sorry for you, Kelly. I don't know if you want to ask a question to Bruce, Kelly. Um, yeah, I, I guess my question would be, I, I thought the, I, I was on the panel for sustainable production and consumption, and I also found the dialogue to be very interesting and useful. I guess my question is, um, given that it's coming so late in the day, uh, what impact it actually has on the outcome of Rio, and in particular, um, looking at the text that was circulated this morning, I noted that in two of the panels, the very top um, actions were you know, phasing out uh, harmful subsidies. In, in the energy one, it was uh, fossil fuel subsidies, more broadly in sustainable production and consumption. And yet, when you look in the actual text circulated this morning, under um, energy, there's no mention of subsidies at all. And under sustainable production and consumption, it's a pretty toothless kind of comment on, you know, that reaffirms existing commitments. So what impact does it really have? And I, I guess I would, would ask if in future maybe these shouldn't be somehow organized earlier in a way where it still has time to influence the text. Yes, well, um, uh, perhaps um, uh, in this um, uh, discussion I would also be able to ask questions to you. I mean, you know, um, uh, it's it's a first time, and um, I think um, uh, 
the, the Brazilians wanted to influence um, uh, the negotiations, but um, of course um, all the negotiators said, ah, but you cannot do that uh, because I'm sorry, we are negotiating uh, for one year already and, uh, and um, um, it, we cannot have a sort of a, you know, input coming from I don't know where, and, you know, I mean, it's, very, it's difficult, but you're right. But I think, um, uh, I think nevertheless that um, uh, this is going to sort of uh, have a sort of build-up of, of civil society. And um, as you are, you are a campaigner, you know how to do all these things. Well, I think now uh, we are going to try to campaign with the United Nations and the whole system to build up things. Uh, I think, you know, it was an experiment. People were a bit wary. What are we going to have? Are we going to have, so for instance, we have some recommendations to launch Esperanto for everybody and things like that, which are a bit marginal, I would say. So people didn't know exactly what would come out. But I think we should have started much earlier. You're quite true. Build it all up. Because we had, in the end, we had 1.2 billion, millions of votes. So, I mean, it would have gone bigger and bigger. But, but we'll do that the next time. But I mean, nevertheless, these recommendations are going to be put in the round tables. Round tables with your head of state are going to be there. So it's going to have a, a life of its own. I don't know exactly what sort of life it will have, but I'm going to work on to make it as lively as possible. Good, we will too. Good. <laughs> oh, yeah, thank you, Rhys. Uh, now we have a question from Twitter. Somebody asking, Ruth Kruger asking, promotion of human well being equals job creation. What's that saying about the birds and the stones? And I would like uh, Sandrine Dixon Leclerc to answer, okay, if she well can. Sure. If, if I may just reflect a little bit on Rhys's point as well with regard to the dialogue. Um, because re representing both an academic institution, the University of Cambridge, and also a business community, I, I fully welcome the dialogues as well, but I, I tend to agree with Kelly that I think that there is a great deal of business companies out there um, that actually really want to see something coming out of the UN process, and the integration of some of the thoughts from the dialogue directly into the negotiations. And we've been told this is going to happen. We voted as a number one point in our dialogue on energy, and I will get to the well-being point uh, on subsidies and looking at the impact subsidies actually have. And that has not, unfortunately, been taken up in the negotiations. So I do hope that if this dialogue is to really succeed, that we see that there's a direct link to the actual negotiations. Because the enthusiasm that you speak about, please, was absolutely palpable. And I had at least a 1,000 people in our room. I think it was fantastic to see how many people were participating. Now, in terms of the, the, the point on well-being, uh, I, I fully agree with the question. And in fact, I think that we need to absolutely link the whole concept of well-being to sustainable development. I think the way in which we look at the future, we have to start talking about the fact that development, if it's done properly, is actually a well-being option across the globe for all countries, whether they be in Western societies or non-Western, so both North and South. And I think we need to get away from this idea that actually development cannot be done in a sustainable manner. And I still see some of that text, that it's very much focused on eradication of poverty, but that to do that, we still need to actually develop. I think we need to develop it in a very different way that allows us all to have a better quality of life. Thank you very much. Um, Ivana, you organized uh, a lot of events among the major groups for children and youth. You probably have a question or something to say to Brice Lalonde? Sure, good morning. So my, so my question um, would be, how do you think in this current process and actually state of uh, negotiations we can uh, maybe more um, influence the outcomes and um, particularly from the perspective of children and youth, how do you think um, we could make our voices be heard more? Well, I remember Ivana, you said um, uh, that uh, we are living actually the, the transformation by, by what was happening in the dialogues. And in the, in the text, um, uh, whatever you, you, you can think of the text, I think it could have been better. <laughs> but um, uh, there is um, uh, a, a, um, a part on the youth, global youth strategy for employment and things like that. And so I think there, there is um, uh, 
something where a door open where we could sort of work together to, to see what would be this global youth and strategy. A global youth strategy is on one hand very inspiring and exciting for, as words, very difficult to see how you can have something global because usually it's, it's national policies. But if this is a place where probably we could work together to, to implement and put the real, um, uh, how do you say it in English, and continue something inside of, of these words or behind these words. Thank you very much, Brice. Um, I think Sandrine is a little bit worried about the outcome of the conference. Perhaps she can say something and discuss it with Brice again, or with other, other panelists if anybody is interested in responding. Sure. Um, I, I, come, I come to the conference, as I said, representing both an academic institution and business. There are many businesses who have really started to integrate sustainability into their bottom line and see that the future for sustainable development is the private sector working with the public sector. What we're worried about is, is some of the um, discussion around the text. Kelly has brought up uh, the energy text, but um, other texts as well related to consumption are not quite as strong as even the business community, the progressive business community would like to see. And I, I think it calls into question whether sometimes um, the governments are not responsive to really what the consumers are starting to say and the business community and of course the civil society is really starting to say. Uh, and I, I do hope that we will come out of, of Rio with a very positive final negotiated text because I do think that there is a very large group of, of businesses and actors around the globe who are very much looking to this conference as moving us forward from the last 20 years and not backwards. Can I just add to that? Yes, of course. I think that's right. I, I think that, you know, all the years I've been doing these sorts of UN kind of campaigns, you know, you never get from point A to point B in a direct line. You always kind of have to tack back and forth. And the real value and, and, uh, and outcome of these things is whether you've made progress and a little, gotten a little bit further on one tack towards the goal. And I think that the real problem this time around is that you know, that getting to point B, the actual time we need to get there is getting shorter and shorter and shorter based on, for example, what the International Energy Agency is telling us uh, about uh, high carbon lock-in projects. And so I think that there's a, a much more bigger impatience now to actually to get there in a straighter line than just this tacking back and forth. And the, the concern that I know a lot of people feel is that this text has just kind of taken us sideways. It hasn't really, just by reaffirming old commitments, and in some cases we've been fighting, they've been fighting in there about whether even to reaffirm those old commitments. We've in some senses got, gone backwards. So I think that um, there's really only the last couple of days left now. We have to see if the heads of state uh, are really going to do something which takes us uh, a bit more <laughs> towards our goal because it's, it's pretty frightening right now. Can I just say one thing um, uh, on, on this? Um, uh, it's important there is an agreement, you see, because if there has no, if you have no agreement, it's even worse than anything. Um, I went to the summit of the people and I discussed with trade unionists, for instance, and I was very surprised how they were linked to the success or the failure of, of the of the Rio Plus Twenty summit. So at least there is an agreement, and of course, having 193 countries to have an agreement is not an easy task. Because, of course, as you say, talking about the subsidies, some, I, I, you know, even in the, round in the dialogues, we, we had um, uh, voices um, uh, saying that for the poor people it's not so easy, we have to be careful, etc. And, of course, um, I, I, the, the, the truth is, in the end, what happens and the action starts at a local or a national level, and we need to have a group of leaders, a group of country leaders to show it's possible. People do not know exactly how to do it, etc. They are, they are afraid. It's so much easier to stick with the, with the old-fashioned things, etc. So we need to create this group of leaders. I think that's the most important thing. Political leaders, country leading, showing it's possible and showing it's a better life, actually, if you do it. So that's the, the things we have to work on the next, I would say, five years. Yes. Thank you very much, both. Um, another question rising from uh, the Internet. Um, why did biodiversity disappear from the conference, at least in the media? 
So I don't know if Brice or Kelly can answer that, that uh, because you have quite a long experience in this topic. Well, if I can just say it hasn't disappeared. It hasn't disappeared, but um, uh, it's the diplomatic way of doing things. You say, okay, this is the big picture. We have um, by we also have a track on climate, which is the UNFCCC. We have a track on biodiversity, which is uh, the, con the, the, the Convention on Biodiversity. There is uh, the, the, the focused negotiation on biodiversity. But there is a reference on biodiversity, obviously. Besides, um, in the conference, not close to the dialogue, there was also a Nobel Prize um, declaration, which is very strong also, and calls for a grand transformation. Grand transformation, I think, or great transformation. This, this reminds us of a book of Polanyi, you know, The Great Transformation. And so it's in, lo, things happen, you know, the outcome of this conference, I think, will be more important than, the, than we think, because all these recommendations, declarations, um, are sort of building up. And um, it's true also that business is, is, is willing to do things and, and wants to do more. But you said yourself, <laughs> the progressive part. Ah, okay, so this is the, this is the answer also. May I uh, answer uh, a bit on the, on the business side? Um, I, I think Pete hit the nail on the head when he talked about leadership. And, and I think that's really what needs to happen. And, and you're right, Pete. Um, not all business is maybe as progressive. I think we need, however, to bring those businesses that are not as progressive along. And I think we need to make them understand, coming to the biodiversity point, that actually natural capital is capital. So in that sense, Maybe the biodiversity point, it, biodiversity in and of itself is not being discussed as, as a, a certain point during the negotiations, but I think there is more and more discussions over resource efficiency and, and the fact that natural capital is absolutely essential. So it's all about leadership, and it's right leaders coming from the governments and the public and the private sector, sorry, that need to work together in order to pull this through. I know the European Union is trying to show some leadership and work very hard with working with the other governments to try to get quite uh, strong text coming out of, of these negotiations. And if I can add, th there is a progress even in the vocabulary because now more and more you have these uh, words coming from the economic world into the, <laughs> the conference saying, talking about natural infrastructure and natural capital. I even heard a, a comment by um, the, uh, the monetary fund saying that uh, you must be careful that the planet Earth does not lose its triple A notation. Uh, you see, sir? <laughs> you know, can I, can I just throw something in here? I think the, um, it's not only, first of all, in terms of it disappearing from the media, I wonder how much the media as at large has really covered this at all. I mean, yeah, we see a lot in the sort of The Guardian and the BBC and specific uh, national papers, but I, I'm not so sure that... The, the, the grand public out there actually even has much awareness that this conference is going on, let alone the specific issues that are being discussed. And I think that um, you know, that's something we all need to work on, to be communicating out to the public why this is important and why it matters. And um, secondly, I think that you know, climate has also disappeared from here. Nobody wanted to import the, the tensions in the climate negotiations into this process, and yet it's, of course, the elephant in the room. And I, I couldn't help but think this morning about the old Confucius quote, you know, wherever you go, there you are. And because as you look at that text, the nego what was underlying these negotiations were exactly all of those same tensions that we see in the climate negotiations, and I suspect in all of these other fora. And, you know, I, I can't help but feel we ought to just lock these folks in a room, stop having all these big summits, and just focus on common but differentiated responsibility, who is paying for this, those core issues, sort that out, and then let's come back together and work out <laughs> what we do in all of these different fora, because it's just, we're just going around in circles wherever we go. I'm not, I'm not completely sure it's true. I mean, sorry to say that. I mean, I, I think, for instance, uh, the idea of having the Sustainable Development Goals is very exciting, because there you have a shift uh, between the, 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 the sort of blocked situation where developing countries um, ask uh, for more help uh, from developed countries and there's a tension there, to the idea that now we're going to try to set goals for the whole of humankind. And everybody accepted this. So I think, um, you know, in the next few years, in especially the year 2015, you know, <laughs> we have decided the next, the next meeting, the date of the next meeting. Well, in 2015, we're going to have the new protocol on climate. I mean, we should. 
we're going to have um, the review of the Millennium Development Goals and the launching of the Sustainable Development Goals. So we could have three very exciting uh, years to build all this up. And, and somebody told me, it's like slow food, you know. This conference is a slow conference. And of course, the media don't cover slow things. And we'll also have the IPCC new assessment, which is going to tell us we need actually fast food. <laughs> <laughs> Thank yes, you very yes. much. Thank you very much. Uh, well, you, you spoke about the future, and there is one question about the future uh, for youth this time. Is for youth, Rio Plus 20, an accomplishment or the start of something? And I would like uh, our two representatives of youth uh, responding to this question. Kate, perhaps first? Sure, sure. Um, I think youth see this as an accomplishment, but also as a, a failure. Accomplishment because we um, are really coming together as young people, uniting on these issues and planning our own way forward um, that maybe some of our representatives and delegates haven't done for us. Um, so while the text might not be exactly what we want, it might not be as progressive as we want, um, it can still really be an accomplishment because we are starting to take the lead on what we want um, for our future. Ivana, you want to answer to that? Uh, sure. I think we have, I mean, maybe we, did, we will not get from Rio what we were expecting to get, but on the other hand, we, we achieved quite a lot, and I think um, we should definitely see things from a brighter side, side, and even those challenges that we face, we should actually see it as opportunities to improve and build upon. So in that case, also with the Rio Dialogues, I think we achieved quite a lot at this Rio Plus 20. Great, and uh, you're going to be the ministers in a few, in a few years, huh? <laughs> yeah. yeah, some people on the internet are saying that the use of networks uh, is encouraging elders and youngers to uh, get closer now. What do you think, Grace? I think it's quite true. Uh, first of all, I have to, you know, learn how to tweet and all that sort of thing. <laughs> So, <laughs> at least we are sharing the same, you know, technology, understanding new worlds, and it, it is very nice to, to work together. And for me, as a, I am a coordinator, I have to coordinate to see that no voices is forgotten and no issues is forgotten. So I go around from the diplomats to the business to the, to youth, to the, to the major groups, and it's very, it's very nice because, you know, you get a sense of what, um, what we're trying to do together. You get optimistic. Uh, because you see that if you cannot open this door, well, you can go by the window down there, you know? So it's what Kelly said, you know? Skip my Kelly, you know? Take me back. <laughs> Kate, what do you think about that? Uh, will they be closer or not? Um, well, I think what people, what young people especially really want, sorry, there is some background noise here, um, is to be included in these sessions and, and to, um, thank you for letting me be on this panel, but, you know, we'd like to see even more young people in discussions like these and in the actual conference discussions, um, and not just in there as, as young people who, um, you know, have some ideas, but as as equals um, in, in deciding our futures and in deciding the text. Um, so that's one thing that we would really like to see as, uh, as an accomplishment um, in the way moving forward. May, may I just add a quick point? I, I just wanted to say that I think the experience in the dialogues definitely also brought the different uh, generations, the different interests together. And I think that was the beauty also of the dialogues. There were many students in my session many students that were able to ask questions. Um, and, and yet the panel was also quite mixed, though there were no students on the panel. But, but I, do think, I do think that already that exchange between business, civil society, the youth, was, was very healthy. Thank you very much. Uh, well, we, we got a lot of messages of volunteers who couldn't be, be part of the Rio Plus 20. Um, should we, I don't know if we should um, uh, let Ray open the doors to everybody or is it better to keep the conference like being member states and a, a kind of civil society uh, representatives? What do you think, Grace, about that? Oh, come on. Of course you know my answer. No, we have to have it open as much as possible. 
we, of course, um, you know, there is um, legitimacy uh, issues and things like that. So we need the governments and we need governments to make decisions, of course. And um, uh, I also think we have to invent, you know, the governance is, uh, is, uh, is, is, is changing. We don't have um, uh, the, the forum for the planet or for the humankind as a whole. We have states together and that's why it's very difficult. And that's why it's very important to have um, uh, youth uh, or major groups or business perhaps even more major groups than we have today because it was a bit formal, you know. And, and what, um, uh, I don't know if it's even uh, okay to say, uh, it's not just one minute in the end, uh, you know, sort of a, a process. It's trying to be, to have youth and, and major groups and business and local uh, governments as part of the decision-making process also. So this is what we have to try to, to, to work on. And, and I would say the, 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 the sense of planetary citizenship can only come from the bottom, can only come from youth and, and from, from all of you. The states have lots of difficulty to do that. But they have to start by having, you know, the, the Madame or, or Monsieur Planet in each government. It's not yet there. <laughs> well, uh, Kelly, you were in Johannesburg uh, for the last conference, and the networks were not what it is today, given that the, the Internet appeared and the youth is much more involved today. Do you think it will change anything to the outcome of the conference? Well, I think, um, well, it was a very different kind of experience in Johannesburg because Johannesburg was Rio plus 10. There was a lot more sense of optimism uh, about, you know, it, you remember in, in 92 we had all the new conventions. Uh, in Johannesburg, the big fight, the biggest fight was really about um, uh, uh, getting the Kyoto Protocol, uh, you know, coming into force. Uh, there were some holdouts there, as you know, and, you know, there was a huge amount of pressure, lots of actions leading into it. I think that, um, you know, what really came out of Joburg was this whole concept of public-private partnerships. That's really where, I mean, it's not the only thing, but that's re really where we started to see a sense of, you know, we can't get governments to, to make these hard agreements anymore, so we really have to look at bottom-up voluntary commitments. And I think that the world has really just gotten more polarized since then, and it's gotten even harder to make these big agreements. But, I mean, the bottom line is that there are some things that only governments can do. We can't, you know, we can get a long way through bottom-up agreements, voluntary action, but at the end of the day, if the governments don't um, actually create the, the necessary incentives and policy frameworks to, to encourage the right kind of investment decisions and consumer behavior decisions, um, you know, we're not going to get all the way that we need to go. So I think that, that yes, we're more active, we have more networks, we didn't have social media uh, back then, so everything is much more immediate. And, you know, I love watching these dialogues happen on Twitter. I mean, sometimes I have an entire day where I'm having a big argument with even some people who I would consider colleagues on the same side and we're debating policy and then policymakers come in and join the thing. So there's a much more sense uh, of interaction and discussion, but whether it's really resulting in better decision making, um, I'm not convinced yet that, that we're seeing that here, because I, I think we're all still pretty polarized. Thank you very much. Uh, a question for Sandrine coming from the internet. Um, are the companies involved in the, in the dialogues or involved in, in this debate competing with uh, NGOs? or are they working together, and how is it possible to work together? Uh, definitely not competing with NGOs. Uh, many of them actually work directly with NGOs and, and have tried to put together their strategies with NGOs. Um, no, I would say that across the board, I actually see many of the more progressive and open companies have worked in partnership with NGOs, both to audit their own operations and make sure that they do the right thing, but also in terms of strategy and outreach. And, and I see that occurring more and more. I also think that a lot of these companies are working together and, and they're sharing actually in, in collaborative ways um, some of their IP, some of their intellectual property. Uh, Nike is a good example in terms of its plastics and bioplastics. Um, many other companies are doing the same thing because they realize that by working together they can actually have more of an impact so we're actually seeing a, a great deal of move towards a much more collaborative um, working partnerships than, than actually the, the opposite. 
Ivana, what do you think about that? Uh, do, you, do you agree? Uh, what do you think this relationship with uh, private companies and NGOs could be could work? Well, I think that we all at some point have some common ground that we should work building um, partnerships. And um, I think there should be a future in that regard. And I think also we should restructure the, the, the how the private sector that we have now also restructured the civil, how civil society is organized and also find a common ground and create a platform where uh, all those different players could meet and discuss and actually work together. Thank you very much. I think that we are, it's, it will be time to conclude now. Um, I don't know if, um, well, let's begin with uh, Sandrine for a conclusion of this Hangout. Or if you have any more questions to Brice, you can ask it as well. Yeah, I mean, I, I was also in work with, with Kelly, and I actually wrote the Fifth Environmental Action Program with the European Commission in the early 90s as a result of, of Rio, first Rio conference. I think there was a great deal of hope, and there still is a lot of hope, that we really can work together and move forward. There is a great deal of leadership out there, and we need to seize that leadership. And I do hope that the negotiators will work together to show leadership as well. We are in a financial crisis. It's very difficult right now to prove the story that natural capital um, and working towards resource efficiency and integrating actually low carbon technologies into our economies are the right way forward. But I think that we have many case studies that demonstrate that it is, and we need to use those examples to show the world that we can do this in, in as sustainable a manner as possible and that it makes financial sense as well. Thank you very much. Um, Kelly, do you want to make a short conclusion? Yes, I, I think that, you know, despite uh, whatever disappointments there may be, I think that we also need to, returning to that point about uh, needing a core group of leaders uh, to show the way, I think we need to be emphasizing momentum where it exists. I think, for example, we need to be working at the national level, like what's happening in Germany uh, has so much potential. Uh, I as they make this transition away from nuclear and towards a renewable-based energy um, infrastructure, that what lessons that have. There are a lot of countries that have carbon legislation that are showing the way. A lot of businesses are showing the way. Um, I'm currently chairing uh, an advisory panel to the UNFCCC, which is called Momentum for Change, about uh, applauding that sort of change on the ground. So I, I think that the lesson for me in all of this is that, first of all, applaud momentum where we've got it. Try to to build on it and make that uh, tr translate into other areas. And thirdly, we really need to do our homework at the national level. You can't expect to change these red line positions here at the conference. It has to be done by holding uh, politicians accountable at home and in, the, in, in a longer time frame in the run-up to these conferences. Thank you very much, Kate. Uh, if you have a short conclusion, because we will have to uh, let all those people work for Ray Plus 20. <laughs> sure, sure, yes, well, thank you again for, for having me on the panel, and um, I encourage these types of things to happen more and more, not even just online, but actually in the negotiating room, negotiating rooms that you bring young people um, into them and you trust in our ideas and our innovative thoughts for the future, um, because we have a lot of them and we want to work with you to build them into something real for um, what our futures can be. So thank you again, thanks, Brees, uh, for your support all the, through the entire process and hope to make something really strong uh, this week and in the future. Thank you very much, Ivana, if you have a conclusion for us. Um, just thank you um, for this opportunity, it was a pleasure and I would also just conclude with we should also be wait with our emotions regarding the um, um, regarding the real plus 20 because time will show how successful the conference was. And we will know it on, like on in few years now. Thank you. Thank you very much. Please, I think it's your turn now. Well, I mean, me too. Thank you. And uh, I think we're going to have a discussion in the UN uh, and, and with the Brazilians and all, all the others to see if we can sort of go on with the dialogues because lots of the panelists and the facilitators said also but it's fantastic because lots of people came and learned things because we discussed with them, they learned about the topics and the issue. So it's also a process of, of 
communicating to the large public what, what, the, what the issues are all about. So perhaps we should find a sort of a regular way of rendezvous um, between all these international conferences. And it's true, it's history in the making. You are making history. I mean, you know, it's a slow process where we're going to do two major things, in my view. One is what Kenneth Goulding said in the 70s. It was, we have to pass from a cowboy economy to a spaceship economy. And spaceship, you know, you have to be careful. And um, the other is governance. We, you know, states together to planet together and with lots of stakeholders contributing. So you don't do that in one, in one go. I mean, it's slow, difficult. You have to learn. You have to have leaders. And that's the most important. People are afraid of future. They don't know. And we need to show, because it's too much doomsday, too much, oh, it's going to be terrible. We have to show that it's a better life. The, the, the positive view of all this is so important. Thank you very much, Grace. Uh, and in uh, 10 minutes now, Brazil will present the outcome document. And you will be able to follow that on the UN TV webcast and on the UN channels. I thank you, everybody, for participating to this Hangout from Rio. And I wish, like everybody, that uh, this conference will, will be a great help for the sustainable development. Bye-bye, everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.